Let's look at the envelope section of the modulator plugin now. If you want to look at the LFO section, watch the previous video, video number 53 of the series. Now, the envelope does the same thing as the LFO. It modulates whatever we want to modulate. The difference is that the LFO is producing a continuous oscillation that repeats based on the rate we set here. The envelope is only triggered once based on the settings we set here. So let's take it from the top. Let's actually turn this one off. We can turn the envelope on and off by clicking this button here. Then here we have the envelope display, which shows us the current shape. Now there are three ways to change the shape. You can either click on the numbers and click and drag. You can grab one of these points and just drag to where, we, where you want, or you can simply double click and type down the number that you want. And like the LFO, you can also select musical values instead of milliseconds by clicking on this little eighth note up here. We will look at some examples later. As you can see, it is labeled a bit differently than the typical ADSR envelope. So let's look at each parameter individually. Now each parameter ranges from zero to 10 seconds. Delay will delay the onset. So how long it takes for the effect to start after it receives a message. Attack will determine the time needed to reach the next stage, which is sustain. Hold will determine the sustain duration. So how long will it hold the effect or whatever we are modulating. And release will determine the time needed for the envelope to fall back down to a value of zero after the sustain. So let's actually listen to an example. Take the output up. As with the LFO section, I can use the pop-up menu to assign what my envelope will be modulating. So by default, it's at off. So if we look at here, the mod wheel is controlling the cutoff. So let's see how we can control the cutoff with the envelope now. So as it is right now, let's do that to mod wheel. As it is right now, it will start immediately. It will take a thousand milliseconds to reach its peak, so one second. It will hold the effect for one second and then it will take it one second to go down back to zero. So let's actually change that. Let's do half a second delay. Good enough. Attack, let's leave it at one second. Let's hold the effect for two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. And let's do a slow release. Let's go down slowly. So let's do, I don't know, four seconds. And now look at the cutoff following these settings here. Or we can synchronize that with the project tempo. So we're going to click on this little eighth note. Since we have a note that lasts four bars, let's do its parameter one bar long. So I'm going to do one bar, one, one, and you're going to be one bar. And let's turn the click on as well and look and listen to it. Now let's look at the trigger section. The trigger allows you to trigger the LFO when it's on the LFO option, but we will look at that in a bit. The multi will trigger the envelope with each new message it receives. So whenever a new note is played, it will be triggered. And the single will only trigger the envelope for the first message received and then ignore the rest. If we look at the piano roll of the second example, you will see that we have a long note that lasts four bars, and then we also have two whole notes on bars three and four. Now, if I leave it on single, the envelope will be triggered only for the first message that it receives. So it will ignore the notes on bars three and four. So let's listen to it and also look at the vibrato right here.
As you can see, it ignores these notes and just follows the settings just for the first note. Let's actually make that a bit longer. Now let's switch to multi. And you will see and hear that the modulation will be triggered each time it receives a new message. So in this example here, it will not ignore the notes on bars 3 and 4. Next, the steps per envelope pass is similar to the one at the LFO section. So when you have it on infinite, so all the way to the right, it produces a smooth stream of controller events. So when you have it on anything else, it will produce a stepped signal, which is also visible on the oscilloscope down here. So let's look at an example. Let's say we are going to do 30 steps. And let's have a listen. That's probably the wrong effect to listen for, so let's switch to the cutoff. And let's take it down. And let's listen and look right now. Now, as you can hear, it sounds steppy. Let's switch to the third example now. Now, let's see how we can interact with the LFO. So we're going to put it all the way to the LFO. And now we can have the LFO trigger the envelope every time it reaches its peak value. So when you look at this wave representation on the LFO, every time the waveform reaches the top position, to explain it very simply, it will re-trigger the envelope. So I will, leave, I will leave the LFO to mod will, and I will leave the envelope to off. So there's no need to modulate something for this example with the envelope, as I only want it to interact with the LFO. So the LFO is already assigned to the mod wheel, and the mod wheel is also controlling the cutoff. So as it is right now, if I switch the trigger to LFO and play it back, nothing will happen. So we only hear the effect of the LFO. I first need to set uh, certain parameters. So the first knob here, envelope to LFO rate, will allow me to set the amount of LFO modulation, or LFO depth, if you will. And that can be modulated by the attack, hold, and release parameters. The one underneath, envelope to LFO amp, will allow me to set the output modulation, essentially how loud you want the effect to be. It's easier to understand this once we look at some examples. So let's make the envelope have zero delay, that's fine. And then let's have attack, hold, and release of, let's do two seconds. We can also press shift and go to the next one. And let's do the envelope, let's do 60%. Right, so as it is right now, it will start from the rate we have set here on the LFO. So it, right now it's on quarter notes. It will take it two seconds to get to the rate we have set on the LFO to the envelope to LFO rate, so which is 60%, which means that it, it will obviously get faster. It will hold that rate for two seconds, and then it will take it two seconds to go back to the original rate that we have set on the LFO. So let's listen to it. And if we want slower rates, we need to go to minus percentages. So let's do the opposite now, so minus 60%. And let's make the release a tad longer. And let's also put this one on, I don't know, let's do 16th notes. And let's have a listen now. So this will be the opposite now. <laughs> So it goes from faster from faster rate to slower rate. And let's go back to 60 for that one. 
Now, if you want less of that LFO effect, you can adjust that output using the envelope to LFO arm. So look at what happens at the oscilloscope of the LFO when I take this knob down. Release is very long. Let's go back two seconds. So essentially, when I put this all the way down to minus 100, then we will be able to hear the oscillation of the LFO only for the attack and the release. When it's at its peak, so at hold, since the output is at minus 100%, we won't hear the effect. So let's actually try it and let's change the settings, the timings of the envelope. So let's say that I want to keep the LFO rate as it is for one second. So I'll do the delay at 1000 milliseconds. And let's say we want to slow down for two seconds. That's fine. And then hold that for three seconds. And then let's do a release of let's do just one second so it will go back to the faster LFO uh, for one LFO rate for one second so let's have a listen And as with the modifier and LFO section of the modulator, you can also control anything else that you want in logic. It doesn't have to be something in alchemy. So I know, let's look at a non-musical example. It will probably sound terrible, but I want you to see that it can actually control anything. So let's stay on this example and let's use, oh, what do we have here? Let's use one of these little alter boy. Yes, that will do. So let's do... Let's turn the LFO off. Yeah, let's use the format. So let me... So let's go back here, learn plugin parameter. And then let's do that. on and now this knob here is following the timings of the envelope which is triggered by the LFO and then you know you can just load more more than one so let's load another one let's make this one a touch smaller so that one can be, uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, let's use this one. I love this plugin. So let's do something that we can actually listen to, the wobble. So learn plugin parameter. I'm going to simply click on the wobble and then set to LFO, envelope, increase the rate. And now you can see I interact with that. So we've got two of these. We've got the format and the wobble being modulated by two different modulators from the envelope that is triggered by the LFO. And that goes for anything. You can control absolutely everything, all plugins in Logic. Now the last two things uh, on the envelope are the output level and the offset, which are exactly the same as, the, as with the LFO section. So the output slider will let you scale the output, meaning essentially, you know, the volume. Now if you look at the oscilloscope of the envelope, you will see that it scales the output and it's actually in line with my slider. So if I keep it here, it will only go to, we've got 57%. So let's go all the way up. And the offset slider will set a positive or negative offset. So if you look at the oscilloscope again, I can offset it with a positive value. So I'm going up. 
and now you see it will stay on that range or I can just do a negative value and it will obviously you know influence the effect that we have okay, now the best example to understand it but you can see what these sl uh, sliders do again not very musical examples but you get the idea you can control anything that you want and you can load as many instances of the plugin that you want well up to eight because eight is the limit of MIDI effects that you can load in Logic Pro. And that's it for the modulator. Until the next one.